DC to beat man. DC to beat man. Oh, from every. What's up, everybody? It's your favorite show, favorite show, Get a Bucket. I'm your host, Train, as usual. I hope you're all having a wonderful, wonderful day. And as you can see, we got my guy Sharper here. Sharp, how's everything with you, man? Hey, living the life, man. Up here, chilling. I feel it. I feel it. You out. Look like you outside on the uh, on the stoop a little bit, or is that the balcony? Out okay, here, now I'm on the Lanai down here in Florida, man. Okay, down by okay. my chilling, working on my fans, trying to. Okay, okay, yeah, see, see, it looks like your, your weather situation might be a little bit better than ours. It's not raining or anything like that, but it don't seem like it's too, too... Nah, it's not too good. They, you know, they haven't had rain down here, my dad's been about 45 days. And a little drought. Hmm, yeah, pros and cons to that, I guess, pros and cons to that, I guess. Um, yeah, that's interesting. I, 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 I'd, I'd like a little rain personally, but uh, that's fine. That's fine. Look, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, man. Um, we got a question for you, and and, and no one's been seen, no one's been able to answer this uh, for me. I, I I'm kind of stumped by it. Let me see what your thoughts are. Uh, this is Gab trivia, ladies and gentlemen. Get a bucket trivia. Just got a quick question. Um, what's a three-letter word that starts with gas? What's a three-letter word that starts mm-hmm. with gas? Mm-hmm. Gas itself. Final answer? Yes. G A. Three letter word. The answer is car. <laughs> Brad. Listen, we can start calling you Okay. Okay. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, hey, I'm just asking. I'm just asking. I just want to start it off. Look, I just want to start the episode off something light, something slight. You know that. <laughs> I think that was a good. One. Riddle me this, riddle me that. Looking for it. Okay. <laughs> I got you. That was All, right. All right. So look, ladies and gentlemen, this is a basketball show, so we can get right on into it. Now we got the uh, 2023 WNBA predictions. Now before you guys leave. We're not going to talk about all the teams, all right? We're going to talk about three of them bags. So, with that being said, um, the Chicago Scott, they've had quite a little turnaround. Um, you lose. Damn, they lost Candace Parker, Courtney Vandersloot, Allie Quigley, and then after that, you make a couple of trades. Um, you still have a respectable roster. Matter of fact, let let's pull up the roster while we got him on on, 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 on while we talked about him, right? So uh, you have Kalia Copper, you have Rebecca Gardner. Um, that is that are those the only incumbents? Dana Evans, I think, was on the squad last year too. It's looking a little new now. To be fair, Marbury. Uh, Courtney Williams, Elizabeth Williams. Uh, these Isabel, are Isabel for like uh, Isabel Harrison. These are yeah, like the, 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 Courtney, these are they're, they're these, they're the yeah, like these are solid players. But again, they had championship aspirations just last season. So my question is this: my question is this. Um, I have a starting five of them, and it sounds like this. Rebecca Gardner, Maria, uh, Marie, uh, Marina Marbury, Kalia mm-hmm. Copper, Isabel Harrison, and Ask Ask. Hey, I'm just going. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know how to pronounce I I, I, did, I don't know how to pronounce her her, her, her last name, but um, a stew. I have a, I have a bold prediction too. You going off bold predictions? I got one for you. I'm gonna predict who the least scores on me. One of the uh, be probably Clear Copper. It could be her. It also could be the newcomer Isabel Harris. I mean, she averaged what 12, 12, 13 points last season. She comes in, you know, she might find her niche, especially if she's in that projected possible starting rotation. So, I mean, they had a lot of players. So that'll be interesting to see. Um, 
Sometimes, you know, just like, for example, just like, for example, everybody always says players that are slow to develop or have maybe issues with one team, they just need to change. I don't feel like, of course, she didn't. I feel like if you're averaging 12 points a game or whatever happens, you're not having an issue fitting in. But sometimes change the scenery can also increase your points. So she might go from 12 to 13 to maybe 15, 18 points a game. Well, I think more opportunity definitely helps out. Um, but I know when I'm looking at, even though, you know, playing time dips, like what it seems to be, like last season she was giving me 18 minutes and then the season before, 24. So I understand, you know, six extra minutes can help out significantly. Um, as long as she's showing energy, I think she should be able to start. Like I said, she's on my starting roster so far. And then off the bench, I think you have Courtney Williams, Alana Smith, and Elizabeth Williams. Like, that's not a that's not a bad roster to have. And again, we have height, we have versatility. Like nobody is 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 short on this team. Like five eleven is is quite tall and it is respectably tall in the WNBA and we're talking about guards. So I think that team can compete. Uh, the question is though, the playmaking aspect I do I am curious about. I know Marbury or Mabry is like more known as a shooter. Uh, I know she can play make though, but I'm curious who's going to be the real playmaker. It's going to be, I think a lot's going to be expected on Kalia Copper to play make a little bit. So, which is yeah, Kalia. So, so it might be Kalia, Isabel, and Marina. Those might be, those might be like your three main, I don't call them the big three, but your main, your main three like focal points. Like if you're an opposing team, those might be the three. Just if we're going off based off the starting five, those might be the three. Like if we can shut two of them down, I mean, not prevent them from scoring, but if we can limit their points, then we have a good chance to possibly win it. So I feel like those would be the three go-to players. That's just my opinion. Well, I mean, they're they're their they're their guards. So I think end of day, if I got to choose some people. Um, it's, and I'm I'm basing this off more so of stats right now, which stats don't tell the entire which stats don't tell the entire story. But I would assume Mabry and then Copper are gonna are gonna lead that because again they're, they're the guards, right? Like they're they're the shorter guards on this team. Um, but I also got to look at Rebecca Gardner as well because I liked her defensive tenacity and I thought too she she might be a solid combo guard, but I think she has the ability to play point guard as well. So I I, I do. If, if Gardner can take on that mantle that I'm expecting, then the sky might also, they might be retooling more so than rebuilding, which I initially thought. Um, and that's going to be interesting as well. Like they could sneak into but the playoffs. Might be playing like yeah. a chess, you know, just moving certain pieces around, seeing how they all form together, see if they can form and fit together like Voltron. Hey. Yeah, but I mean, the the thing that the sky did do well was they assembled a team that Candace Parker eventually wanted to go to where you can just plug and play, you know? So if you do the same thing, which they've shown the capability to do so, I think they actually could surprise some folks uh, before long. I mean, you know, we're, again, we're talking about the Aces and Liberty, but I do believe they have a chance at, you know, shaking some things up if the right things let fall. Me now, you, let me let me ask you this real question. I feel like, so, ever since the Chicago Sky, for the most part, has come into existence, right? Like, I'm a big Mystics fan, whatever happened. Elena Deladon was with them first. Like, they had a marquee name, right. Elena Deladon. And then they made that trade with us, and we gave them Big Mama Steph, Steph Matheson. She was there for a little bit. Candace Parker teamed up. They were able to get a championship. Uh, Steph went now. I think she's with the Liberty. And then, you know, Candace left. I, but they've always had, like, a marquee, like, somebody to kid that the face of the franchise. So I guess the bigger question is, it's not, every team doesn't have to have a face of a franchise. But they went from Elena Deladon. They had a quick, like, Stephanie for a little bit, and then Candace came. There was Candace, the team. She wanted to go back home. Who do you feel like maybe could be the face of the franchise for the Chicago Sky? I mean, yeah, that anybody. It just, it just depends on who wants to go there. Like, being the face of a team, is it just depends on who's the best talent 
on that squad. Like right now, it could be Kalia Copper because just a couple seasons ago, she was the finals MVP. So, I mean, why can't it be Kalia Copper? You know what I'm saying? Like, like the face of an organization typically is who you, who do you want to build your team around for the foreseeable future? And right now, point in time, there's no other player on that team outside of Kalia Copper. And I think she also is deserved of being the face of the program. Again, she's the finals MVP for your team. True. Like, I got I to gotta, I gotta look at Kalia Copper for that one. So, I mean, that... That was easy. Now, I think that uh, kind of ties into my question: Who do you, who do you think is the X factor for the Chicago Sky? Because Isabel, Isabel Harrison, I really? feel like if she can come in, if she can, I feel like what we see, she got about twelve points last year, twelve, thirteen. If she can get that up to like fifteen and be a solid, obviously. Boy. Here's what here's what say hold on. Here, here's what she pulled here's what she pulled up uh last year. These are her these are her stats. Uh her career actually, but so last year. No, uh, let me see. So she had eight last year. So she okay. Mm-hmm. So it's been up and down. I feel like maybe more playing time, maybe. I mean it also it also she, about, she had, when she had more about, time, she was given 12. But it's also about, because, like, she got, right, so it's also about, like, do you fit the team's chemistry? Do you fit, like, their dynamic, like, how they play? A lot of people think, you know, just real quick, I know we're talking about WNBA real quick, but a lot of people, I know you and I didn't immediately think this, but... When Kyrie went to Dallas, everybody was like, yo, that's about to be the best backcourt in the league. Ain't nobody going to be able to stop the Mavericks. And Trey, where are they at? Are they going to be like me and you sitting at home watching the playoffs, enjoying popcorn and having a sip of a drink? I think so. So it's all about do players fit like so. Can she possibly? So we see 8.7, right? Let's say she can get 12. I was wrong. I apologize. If she can get 12, 13 points now. Like you said, more time, more opportunity. It's all about how if she was in that projected role, like you know. And do you? It, it, can you all? I, I look at game? I look I look at it like this, bro. Um, on this team, I have three players who can score, possibly better than her. I apologize for messing up at, uh, the big uh, the, the center's name. I don't even want to. I don't even want to do that to myself no more. But like, nah, seriously, bro. Matter of fact, hold on. I know they got like what it sounds like. I promise you, like it. Those names. I just start calling by initials. A student door. I a student door. A student door. I think. Hey. I, think Any, I, I, I apologize if that's not how you say it, but. Um, on that role on this team, you got to have somebody do the gritty work. And like, don't get me wrong, I think Rebecca Gardner definitely could. Um, but again, from a scoring perspective, I think these three players, heck on it, I keep thinking I'm showing my screen. I think these three players right here are going to be your main scoring option. So I got to look at her as getting the rebound, not really relying on the scoring as much. Or when we need you to keep the defense honest, but make it a little easier for, for, for these three, which again, they have good height. They're both like these two are six one, right? Defensive minded, defensive minded, can pass, can shoot the ball, can shoot the ball, can shoot the ball. This could be I, I don't they could have a Golden State Warriors like system. Meaning in terms of like how they try to play. I'm not saying anyone's step. I'm not saying anyone's play. Although my boy Devin did try to say that Mabry is uh, clay. But I think they could have a respectable playoff type situation. Um, if not, too, I'm not, I'm not mad at you. Uh, maybe you could try to get a top three picked in and go Angel Reese or uh, Paige Beckers or Caitlin Clark. But, you know, that, that's, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't think they need to. I think they have a good team in place now. I do wanna, I do wanna, I don't wanna harp on them too much, but we got some other teams to talk about, Sharp. Um, 
such as such as in this team that you could view them as retooling um I mean, i'm sorry building you know what i'm saying the indiana fever uh and matter of fact let me just go ahead and do this the indiana fever that's who we talking about right what's your what's your thoughts on the fever before i show up this before i show the screen do you have you followed them much are you are you a fan of them, really? Like, what's your thoughts on the people? I'll be completely honest. I have not really followed them a lot. I'll be completely honest. Um, okay. They probably are going to get a Aaliyah Boston, more than likely. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I know Aaliyah Boston in college. She was a double-double machine. So, for the most part. Uh, so, carrying that weight, speaking hypothetically, if you were to get her in the draft and the ping pong ball and stop it with y'all number one, y'all snag her. That's a lot of pressure for a rookie. We can have to let's let's let let let's, 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 let's pull up the roster and see if she really gonna have a lot of pressure then. Because like you said, they are drafting number one and they're more than likely gonna draft Leah Boston. Now, when I have this team, my starting lineup is looking like in my estimation. Yeah. Erica Wheeler, Kelsey Mitchell, Victoria Vivens, Melissa Smith, and then I have Queen Egbo in here because I made the team based on, like, I didn't include draft picks just because, like, one, you don't really know where players are going to get drafted officially outside of the top two. We know um, Boston's going here, and then Miller is going to the, uh, oh, my gosh, to the Lynx. So with that being said, though, um, we can slide Egbo to the bench potentially, or to, to the bench, and then Boston goes number one at the at the center spot. So again, just just to clarify, these will be my four starters, or these will be my starters along with um, Aaliyah Boston and. Okay. Yep, there we go. All right, so. We got them, like I said, plus Aaliyah Boston. Um, I think personally, it won't be a lot of pressure on Aaliyah Boston. Here's why I say that: the Indiana Fever. Um, I was telling I was telling Naomi about this. They actually could sneak into the playoffs this very season. Uh, I remember last year she said the Indiana Fever. You know, they're surprised. She's surprised that they've been at the bottom for so long, just because they've been drafting so low for so long, right? And you would think that that talent starts to accumulate at some point in time. I do believe that point in time is this season. Um, if, I, if if some teams surprise me, then maybe the youth might hurt their chances of getting to the playoffs. But an eighth seed, seventh seed is very possible point in time for me right now. Uh, what's your thoughts on on the fever? Again, we got a young squad, but do you, does, does that change your mind a little bit? Because again, they can go deep as well. You got you still got the Donnie Henderson, Maya Caldwell, Lexi Hull, Emily Inksler, Emma Cannon, and Queen Egbo that can all come off the bench for that team. So I mean, they they have the depth, they have youth. Like sure. you still think there's pressure from Boston? No, I mean, if she if they can play her. Her coming off the bench, it depends on how quickly and how smoothly she gets acclimated to the WNBA game. You want her, you want the number one draft pick coming off the bench when the number two draft pick right. last season was starting? I mean, look, 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 look. I'm saying maybe for the first two, three games. I'm not saying for the whole season. You know, just let her... What's the, what, what's, what's the purpose of her coming off the bench first two, three games? Because, again, there's 40 games in the season. So you're saying the first two to three, she's coming off the bench, what, just to get acclimated to the game? Yeah, I mean, just to see. It, one, it all depends on, again, it's all about scheme. I, I mean, they're going to draft her more than likely. Um, do you really want to throw her into the fire right away? Now, here's the thing. Like I said, two games. Let's say, you know, two games, shoot. She can be starting a week after the season starts. These women got, you know, back to backs, whatever I have you, just to see how she does. Now, I will say this I do watch the WNBA. I do wish, but I don't know if you can tell, you can correct me if I'm wrong or not. Uh, they don't have the summer, like, they don't have, I, I know a lot of the women play overseas, 
but they don't have like the rookie summer league type games like the NBA has, right? I don't believe you're talking about like a summer league type. They don't. There's no G League type affiliations. There's no. I don't. I don't. I don't believe they have the rookie. I don't. I don't. I don't believe they have that rookie. That's the one thing I wish. I think that's the one. That's the one thing I wish. The WNBA and I, and I hope. I hope that they can get that for these young ladies coming in. I would. I hope that they can get like a. You know what I'm saying? A G League affiliate. And I know I'm getting off topic, but a, like, a summer league. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the only reason why I made that comment. Just, you know, getting her toe, getting her feet wet, dipping her toe in the water, getting used to it and everything like that. Because I have seen, like, I remember Candace Parker did an interview. And, you know, she started right away. She was like, it was like, you know, like, you know she was so used to everything coming so easy at Tennessee. But of course, she's, you know, a future Hall of Famer. But she said, like, it took her, like, that first month to really get acclimated to, because she thought she was going to come in and just dominate. And it took her that first month to be like, okay, like, it's real deal. That's the only reason why I say that. Interesting. So I, I was looking, um, I think the concept you brought up about the Summer League would be interesting. I would. There is, I, I, I don't think there's a summer league at all, um, which I think there's enough there's enough players drafted to the point where you can form up some teams and be like, all right, let's put these teams up again. Let's put these players up against these players. You know what I'm saying? Like, there should be some league. There could be a, a league within the WNBA where you can, like, start playing and picking players from those. It could be similar to the G League for the WNBA. Like, there should, that should easily be doable. And it, it, like I, I don't see how you can't make that type of situation. So I, I would love. I, 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 yeah, we definitely got to revisit that. We definitely got to revisit that. Um, but for the but, but for the for uh, for Boston starting I, versus coming off the bench, I hear you because uh, you, like, you 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 don't know how fast someone's going to be acclimated or is going to acclimate to the game. Yep. With with with, with Aaliyah Boston, though, she's six five. She seems mobile enough. I understand she didn't she didn't have the best game against Iowa, right? She got into foul trouble a little bit. Uh, some people might have some questions about her game. For an entire season, we called her the unanimous number one pick. Like, I don't... I gotta assume she can acclimate and adjust pretty well. Like, I'd be pretty I'd be pretty shocked if she couldn't. So, for me, looking at her on this team, I don't think there's any pressure on her starting. Because she wouldn't have to be the number one focal point. You have to play there. You got other players who kind of pick up that slack. Erica Wheeler is a quality point guard who can feed the bigs the ball because a, a big needs to needs a guard in order to really shine and thrive. So I think she does not have that pressure. I understand why you say that though. I I, I would just say a hey, I I would rather her start. This isn't a for me. I had I wanted the Warriors to draft Lamelo Ball. And I wanted LaMelo to come off the bench. And if I wanted him to earn his time to really, truly appreciate that role because of the system he was going into. I don't think Aaliyah Boston is going into that championship pedigree type system. So I, I don't, I'm not taking the same approach with, with her on that. Oh, Sharper, we, we are, we are, um, we are here. Because I guess for me, oh, I'm sorry, let me do this before we did it. The X factor for the, for the fever, who would that be for you before we transition? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna push on. I don't gamble, but I'm gonna push all my chips to the middle of the table. If she gets drafted number one, it's gonna be Aaliyah Boston. So you think Aaliyah Boston is gonna be their X factor? Interesting. Okay, I actually think the X factor is gonna be. I think I think she's gonna average ten and eight. I don't think that's the X factor. I feel like the X factor is someone who's extremely important. Don't get me wrong, she is important to their future, but for this particular season, I think they can get by with her not necessarily having to dominate or anything like that. I look at Erica Wheeler, I look at Melissa Smith. Those are two players that I think are the X factor reason why. Erica Wheeler is a dynamic guard, very underrated. Um, and then when I look at Melissa Smith, she actually had a really solid season last year. It was out, it was overshadowed by Ryan Howard's rookie year all-star birth. But 
how many rookies are doing that. And again, Melissa very well could have made the all-star list herself too. I mean, who won Sylvia Fowles last season? Maybe Melissa sneaks it in over Sylvia. Who knows? Like, it, 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 she, she's a good player. So those two players, again, bigs, they need someone to get them the ball. Erica Wheeler can help Aaliyah Boston out. And then with Melissa Smith, she can bring the ball up herself. So she's developed real well. Maybe she can have her all-star nod this season. And now the fever are really trending in a really good direction. Because now you see you have an all-star caliber player. And you're just seeing, waiting to see if Aaliyah Boston will pan out. So those are my two X factors for the fever. But we got uh, we, we got we got the moment that I'm certain you've been waiting for, Sharper, you know. Oh. We got the Washington Mystics, okay? Now, is there anything you wanted to say quickly before I, you know, show this, before I show the roster? I'll, I'll let you go on your soapbox. Can we just stay healthy? That's all I ask. You know what? Elena Deladon, it was great having you back. I just hope that you can continue to stay healthy. Uh, Shakira Austin, she balled out. I'm still hurt. They let go of my my crush, Melissa Clark. You know she's with the Aces. Lord have mercy, the women are stacked out there. Um, but you know, I feel like we have a chance. We have a chance. We uh, we brought in some new help. We brought in uh, Brittany Sides. And I let's hold on. 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 You, you talking to go down the roster? I'm about to go ahead and pull it up now. So look, here's what. Here's what we here's what I'm thinking about your roster, right? Tell me what you think about this starting lineup. Tell me if you want to tweak it. Now y'all got a couple of y'all got a couple of decent players out here, right? Like I like Brittany Sykes as a pickup for you guys. That's gonna work wonders for y'all. So I got Natasha Cloud, Ariel Atkins, Brittany Sykes, Elena Deladon, and Shakira Austin. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and do it. Uh, you know what? You know what's crazy? Let me tweak. I'm about to tweak your I'm about to tweak your starting spot. Oh, let me let me just let me let me make sure you know exactly who we got. So that oh, way, yeah, we got five, right, we got one, bad, eight, and then Natasha. Oh, coming back. Right. I can't. Oh, so who would you who would you change up? It depends. So like, I feel like see, now you got me in a tough spot because. Because see, because see, here, here, I want all right. Let, let me, oh, let me, let me, t- let me tell you my bench, and let me see if that changes your mind too. Because off the oh. bench, I'm was, I was gonna have Christy, Satori, Avina, Maisha, and then Amanda. But I also forgot too that you guys got our number, or our first round draft pick this year, meaning my Sparks. So you guys are gonna draft Suarez. So at I feel like eight six six big. I, I feel like this. I feel like, you know what we might do? Because it matched that intensity in the backcourt. Like that, that high. See, here's the thing. You got Brittany who came in. She's a two-time defensive player. I, I feel like this. our defense, that was the main thing. Health and defense was our main issue last year. So you, you bring in Brittany. She's going to bring that grind. I think, I mean, the top is going to. Backcourt. You, you, you said this was starting five? Yeah, I, I think so. I, I think okay. and I was, first I was going to go with Christy because I was hyped just to have her back. Right. I thought that too. She was part of the team that, you know, when we won with Atlanta before. 2019, right. Happy. I know she's happy to be back. She's scrappy. You don't want to have too much, like, you know what I'm saying? I, I thought about it at first when originally I was going to be like, okay, Natasha, Christy. Elena and Shakira and Eric and I was like, nah, nah, nah. You're gonna need somebody to match. Like coming off the bench, you're gonna need somebody to match that Natasha Cloud energy so there's no drop off. Christy, even though she's the older player, she's been with this organization before. She knows what it's about. She's about winning traditions. You know, I think didn't she went with y'all too though? I thought yeah, she went with she the, did. Yeah, she did. so so she's the one with two different organizations. Ironically, both of our teams. So, and she's back in the DMV. So I could see her coming over, maybe even being a, 
even though Natasha Cloud can hold her own, I feel like Christy is a well-respected player in the WNBA, and her voice holds weight. So also maybe her, actually, she might take Natasha and Brittany's game up a level just because she's been there, done that. She's a champion. So, I think she adds she adds that experience like you saw on the screen. That, that, Played about yeah, that, thirteen seasons, had a yeah. couple of injuries here and there. But I remember Christy Tolliver at Maryland, she was a bucket. And um, when I look at Christy Tolliver now, I see somebody who can hit the three ball when I need her to. If I need a quick ten, okay, I'm gonna get that from her. Like I'm not talking about consistently. All I need is in spurts and then somebody who can again manage the second unit because you guys have a couple of interesting pieces, like, you know, Shatori, all right, Corvino, who didn't play last season. That would have been nice for you guys to have, but due to injury, cool, we'll see how that shakes. Um, but she comes out of UConn, so she doesn't have, so she comes from good stock. Like, you guys have a good player, and then Amanda didn't play last year. I forget the reason why, possibly due to injury, or maybe we cut her for some reason, but, like, like fresh legs. So, again, you guys have talent. Um, I think it still kind of just falls on Elena Deladon's Help, right? So, uh, as a matter of fact, let 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 let's pull up the screen so the people you know can kind of see who we're talking about. Who would you say is y'all X factor outside yeah. of Elena Deladon's health, yeah. right? Like like out, outside of EDD, like who, who, who's your X factor? Shakira. And Shakira. her taking okay. up, her taking that next big step. Yeah. Now she's confident because if you get her going with Elena Deladon, that's gonna be a problem. Yeah, no, that's a that's a whole that's a whole problem right there. I was looking at some of her clips and stuff. You get her coming off the bench and stuff, like you said, running with the Christian Tolliver. That's gonna be some issue. Yeah, because you have two. If you have two bigs that can score at will, they can feed off each other. Mm. And, and we saw that with Shakira Austin, like in games when Elena Deladon didn't play. Or maybe she was struggling with in, uh, injuries because she didn't have her best game. Shakira can show like I belong to you. Like yeah. she's down, next woman up. Like I'm here, I'm ready to yeah. put me in. So her gaining that confidence, and I know Elena. I was listening to NBC Washington and Monumental Sports. Elena gave hella praise to Shakira, talking about how proud of her she was. The big steps she was taking, and she knows she knows how it could be rough being a rookie, but she showed out when the lights were bright and on the biggest stage or stages. And Elena said, you know, part of the thing she felt bad about was her health because she said, "I want to be out there to play with her." And one thing she said is, "If you get me and her out there together, it's gonna cause it's gonna create issues and be problems for other teams." And I, I totally see that. Yeah, no, they, they, they're a solid duo. They work well together. And I like the fact that, and, 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 and I like the fact that Shakira was able to play with a bunch of stars last season. Like, during the off season, she was able to play, like, after the season. So, in the summertime, gain that experience. You start to gain that confidence. So, when you come back that next season, you're going to do a little bit better than what you did the year prior. And again, that was just her rookie season. So I'm looking forward to seeing what she can do. I know I was talking with DJ He and she said that she can reach all-star. Uh, she can become an all-star this season. I think it's possible. If I had to lean a percentage, again, I think I said 60-40. Um, I'm not quite comfortable saying all-star, but I'm not saying she can't reach it either. Like, you guys, I agree with you. That is your X factor end of day because um, – Elena Deladon is, is is pretty special, but hey, what happens if maybe Shakira reaches? I'm trying to give a comparable level because what happens if Elena Deladon doesn't have to do as much on the offensive end? You know what I'm saying? Like, what happens if Shakira can reach her at that level? I don't think that's happening year two, but if she can, like, the more the higher she's able to take a jump, the less of a load on Elena Deladon, and now your team gets that much better. So. I, I, I agree with you. Elena Deladon wanted to be closer to her family. And the closest mm -hmm. family, you know, the closest team was the Mystics, the Delaware. Shakira Austin, but see, she didn't get drafted. She was trade. Shakira Austin is from the DMV. She went to high school in Upper Marlboro. 
she, yeah. she was born in Fredericksburg, but she was she was you know what I'm saying grew up in the DMV, so she was hyped. Like it's like you're playing with that extra added. For some people, they welcome that pressure. Some people shy away. KD, anyway. Um, same. Uh, keeping it a buck. She 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 enjoys playing in front of the hometown team. Not everybody built for tough like her. I'm just saying. I Get think he's up. okay playing in D.C. It's the amount of people he'd have to turn away because they would keep asking him for stuff just because he's... Man, he got, like, man, yeah, I, I, I understand his point. I understand his point. But I get yours, too, though, in that Shakira is a tough gal. Like, she, she's she's a trooper. I, I will say, like, she she's a special kind of player. You know, like, anybody would love to have her on the team. So I think if you're talking about face of, a, of, of, of an organization... I think you can look at Elena Deladon, but I think you also need to look at Shakira Austin too for the Mystics. Like that, but see, those hey, two Shakira are the faces of your organization. Shakira said, like, one, it was just an honor and a blessing to get drafted into the WNBA, but to get drafted by your hometown team and you get to play in front of your family and friends. She's like, yeah, you know, I'm you, she said there's pressure that comes with that, but also she's like, I'm playing with pride. Like, but see, that's what I'm saying. That's why she's the face of the organization along with Elena Deladon. Not too many players can do that. So, I mean, end of day, good talent. Um, she actually helps out Natasha Cloud, in my opinion, because she likes Natasha Cloud. They work well together. That duo you don't want to get rid of. And if Shakira Austin is part of the future and you continue winning, I like to think Natasha Cloud is kept because realistically, anybody in the day, unless you're a star player, is expendable. So if you fit chemistry wise, you're good. Like, and I know for a fact that if Natasha, if the right deal came along, Natasha Cloud would get dealt. And that's not from a oh Natasha Natasha Cloud can't fool, but she's not good. I know personally that 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 deal came across, it would get taken. Out of but she and she's a good player. So I mean. I, I, I like I, I like I like Shakira Austin for you guys, man. Like y'all y'all are fine. Um, y'all in that tricky spot though, because I halfway want to say too, maybe you could possibly tank for one more season, but y'all didn't have to tank in order to get this fourth pick too. So hey, but Sharp, I greatly appreciate you for coming on the show, my boy. This was a good conversation. Um, we definitely going to talk about some more WNBA teams later on in the season. You know, like monitoring you know it's coming out before long so but before we go do you have anything you want to say to the folks from close up shop if y'all haven't seen it go see air go see air that's all i'm gonna Ooh, say. good call good call yeah we didn't talk about the shows we did not talk about the shows at okay, all go see it go see it if y'all can even if y'all not a sneakerhead if y'all like a jordan fan trust me the whole process let's put it like this mama jordan she's a real MVP. Go see the movie. All right, bad. That's a nice little plug there. That's a nice little plug right there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, look, hope you all had a good one. Please stay tuned. Uh, and until next time, take care. Oh, I did not know you guys were still here. As, as, as you can see, we're at the back end of the show. No pun intended, but look, hope you all enjoyed it. And before you go, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow the IG account, share the content to anybody who's anybody. And most importantly, leave your thoughts and comments below. But I got to go back and play Buddy in 2K, so let me unmute him real quick. Excuse me. Hey, boss, I'm back. Nah, you better catch this word. You know we get buckets around here, too. Speaking of a late boss, and I want you to bookmark this when I say this. And we'll call it now. Speaking of Aaliyah Boston, in two to three years, Don Staley will be a WNBA coach. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. In two to three For maybe the fever? Later. For the fever? I'm just saying for a WNBA team, she will be a WNBA head coach. I'm going to call it now. I said two to three years. I think that's you, don't think she don't, you don't think she loves South Carolina enough to... No, I didn't say she doesn't. Like, let's say they... Let's, Speaking hypothetically, so the reason why I say enough is because 
Coach K got offered to coach the Lakers with Kobe, and he turned it down because he loved Duke. So, I mean, you don't think Don is going to love South Carolina enough to, to, to turn down a, a WNBA gig? You know, I feel like and her team that she played on, they got they got rid of that team in Charlotte's team. I feel like if that team was still around and probably would be a no brainer for her. But I will call, I say two to three years. I would not be surprised if she is coaching somebody's team in the WNBA. I'm just I'm just calling her as a Okay. All right. So we'll, we will. Also, also, I think it's good for the game too. I feel like her and Tina Thompson. You know, she's coaching Cleveland. She's doing a great job. I feel like women that were pioneers that were part of that '96 Dream Team mm-hmm. coming back and coaching. Like even even though Becky Hammond wasn't part of that team, like Becky Hammond, Hall of Famer. What she doing now? She's coaching the Liberty. Like going back. Is you know it's paying back, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you got like, yeah, you got to respect the game. Of, I think yeah, a lot of women grew up watching you, and now they're being coached by. You. Yeah, you know what I'm I think I think coaching come back to coach. I think even coming back to ref, like I think those would be two parts of the game that you can actually help out in. Because honestly, when you're learning the game, I look at coaches and refs the most. Like those should be the two players or the two entities that are actually guiding you in basketball the most so and that's like I, I reached out to a woman who I've known since I was 12 years old and that will be University of Tennessee on Carolina mm-hmm. I remember I used to go to her basketball camp when I was little and I remember her and I talked messaging when she got the NBA job as an assistant coach with the Celtics and then I congratulated her when she got the Duke women's head coach and her being the first black female coach at Duke. Right. And, you know, you know, this is only like her second year, but Carmen wants to add, not right away, but eventually maybe would she dibble dabble. Maybe, I think, I feel like her, because, you know, she got to build Duke up. Don Staley got a resume. She already got two. Well, she got- I, I, she's built Duke up, but again, I think if you've had that, if you've had some success, at that co- at that collegiate career at that collegiate level, and if they're willing to pay you enough, you might not leave. You know, like anything could happen in the WNBA. That turnover could be ridiculous. But if you if you've established a culture like she, Duke was not ranked for the longest, but now they're ranked. So I it, 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 it it's interesting to see what coaches would come in and, and take that job. It, it's a personal pre- I, I guess it's a personal thing, but I, I can't I can't call it. It's just. It, it'd be surprising to see them leave at least quickly. So at least quickly, but 